What up, y'all? Yo, yo. <laughs> Hell yeah. Taste Buds is back again. One more episode, maybe. Maybe 10 more episodes. Who knows? Fucking 11 more seasons, Morty. Anyway. Uh, 11 seasons? <laughs> you heard me. How many episodes are in a season, my guy? Um, well, according to season one of Taste Buds, fucking 11, right? <laughs> okay. I mean, that's what happened, right? We just we just had season one of Taste Buds. Now this is this is kind of the off season part, gearing up for season two, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, y'all. <laughs> Runa looks dope. Oh, I gotta pull you up. What do you mean you look dope? I got I, I, I didn't even get to see gonna, my co-host. Told you I was gonna. Oh my god. Hold on. Fucking pull this up right away. Where are you? There you are. Thank you. Look at you. Oh my god, you do look amazing. That's really cool looking, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. I have nothing. I, I got me. It's me. Hi. <laughs> Movie looks stupid already. He's getting back at me for the Avenged Sevenfold. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not Why you. you not that? you. No, no, no. Oh, not oh. Zach. <laughs> oh, I see him now. <laughs> Movie looks stupid already. Holy shit. <laughs> now nah, you looked up mm. though, homie. Well done. Thank you. Mm. All right. So, um, yeah. Today, before we're doing... we get into the review, do you want to maybe do the other part of Taste Buds? Yeah. Like, uh, today we're going to review Hocus Pocus 2. But before that, we had a couple, we had two submissions for the little uh, food thing we were going to do. So, we're going to show those off real quick. I, I did not do a whole lot for this, y'all. So, forgive the, the production value. Uh, oh, so yeah. I up, mean,. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, you know, I got Chase's, I'm not sure what these are. Are they donuts? Are they little cakes? Cassie's here. She could probably tell us because I know Cassie. Oh, I don't know. They look good as fuck, though. They do. And they do, they do. <laughs> this witch smoking. <laughs> Cake donuts. Okay, I was, I was right on both counts. Let's go. Cake donuts. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were delicious. Picture. They look delicious. They do. This is well done that... with the uh, with like the, the brownie crumbs or whatever that is to give it almost like that dirt effect on top of where it already has the brown and then the worms coming out. Those are really well done. I like those a lot. I'd fucking stuff it in my face hole. Word heard that. <laughs> <laughs> they, were they were called cool. here. These are bomb as fuck. <laughs> 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 right, right. All right, and next up we have Elder's submission, which was these little meat pastry things that he made. These are so cute. I love these. And the presentation. They do look really cool. I love it. Yeah. But what they actually are. Oh, I want them so bad. I know. So we got a couple of pictures here. This is yeah. one. I'm assuming that's ketchup. I'm not sure. But, you know, it looks like the eyes are bleeding. Yeah. What up, or probably like some sort of ketchup glaze to go with like the the inside inside. Yeah, and speaking of the inside, here's the inside. Jonesy here for this? Wow. Yeah. Pull up. Let me fucking stand to attention. We got a Jonesy in chat. That don't happen often. Good lord. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Meatloaf filling. Mm-hmm. That shit looks, looks fucking dope. Looks very tasty. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for the submissions, though. We appreciate the fuck out of that. Uh, I know it was kind of last minute and it was kind of like thrown together, but we wanted to do something with the food side of it and with a movie and an album and everything else we've been doing this week. Runa with her terror readings, me with all the other shows like we just didn't have time to do food stuff. So I appreciate you guys bringing that submissions in and bring those submissions in and letting us just kind of talk about them a little bit to cover the food section. You guys carried us there for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, but yep, um, yep. shall we? Shall we? I can't miss a return of taste buds. You mean like the one you missed on fucking Monday? <laughs> what you mean, dog? <laughs> I'm joking. I'd love to see you here, dog. It's fucking wonderful. <laughs> but pilot uh, Flaky Jones will always be Flaky Jones. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So, would we like to get into the start of this? Yeah, go for it. All right. Okay, so Hocus Pocus 2, and if you guys remember correctly, I always just kind of like wrote notes as I was watching the movie. I'm just going to read those. Okay, that's that's just how we kind of do things here. So there's going to be, you know, several scene progressions and just little chit chat I have in between things that are going on. Just 
me explaining the movie and yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, me and Bruno like to try to sync up on scenes. So if one of us feels like we're getting too far ahead, the other one will stop us and be like, oh, hey, let me catch up to you real quick. You know, that kind of deal. Uh, so here we go. First off, a fun take on the Disney screen right off the bat. Sets up for what one could only imagine is going to be a fun-filled adventure for checks notes, kids. But the only people that will care are their 30-something-year-old parents. Yeah, I'm sure this is going to be great. <laughs> All right, I, I think will you do have my something little to say spiel. with the opening, so yeah, yeah go ahead. I'll do my little spiel. So, Hocus Pocus, the first one, came out in 1993. I was two at the time, but my mom watched it, and she absolutely fell in love with it. And it was always our tradition when I was growing up to watch that movie on Halloween every single year. It's one of my favorite movies, the original. So I was really excited for two. Um, so I went into this with a, you know, a sheen over my eyes, if you will. Kind of like Carnage with the Avenged Sevenfold album. Like, Well, I, I was going to say, you, you say that, but at the same time, like, I too enjoyed the first Hocus Pocus. Like, when I was, okay. when I was... When I was a kid, like I enjoyed it. I, I I certainly remember it. I certainly know all the references and callbacks they were making in this movie. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it, yeah. No, it, no, I'm not trying switching. to disparage you, bro. We don't gotta get. No, no, no. Yet. I didn't think you were. I just wanted to kind of. No, no, no. I did. I just wanted to kind of clear my name. Was hey, Carnage has seen a movie <laughs> or two before. I promise, guys. <laughs> and Hocus Pocus one was definitely one of them. As a kid, like I did, I did enjoy this movie. Uh, yeah, it, it, there was there was some fun parts to it back in the day. I, it's not exactly my favorite Halloween movie, but I enjoyed it as a kid. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Like Carnage said, you go into the, the classic Disney opening, and then it gets kind of spooky and gloomy and a little bit witchy. And you see, like, this crow that has some interesting colors on its wings flying over. Like, it dips down into the water. It's flying over these woods, goes into this little village, and it's 1653 in Salem. Uh, I have... Uh, do do yeah. I'm sure this is going to be great. Well, they did a great job getting the representation of the Sanderson sisters, Sanderson sisters as kids, but I don't think we're quite there yet. So maybe I shouldn't have said anything. No, you're good. Keep going. <laughs> okay, all three of the kids are spot on representations of their older selves, even down to the colors they wore in the original movie, being one of the first callbacks to the original movies I caught at least. Yep, that was that was it for me. Uh. It you know it starts off with Winifred storming through this village and everyone's like oh my god, and she meets up with her sisters and it's her birthday it's her sixteenth birthday and all of their mannerisms are like spot on those kids did a really good job mm -hmm. of capturing the adult versions of themselves absolutely like uh, Mary had the same lip thing going on and you know Winifred had the same like attitude like oh it's all about me 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 and you know Sarah. Mm -hmm. Has like whenever the Reverend knocks on the door because he's trying to get Winifred to marry some some dude. I what was his name? Trask. Some Trask boy yes. in the village. Yes, one of the Trask boys. Yeah, and Sarah goes, "We're not here," and like it's it's a callback <laughs> to the original movie. Well, yeah. in the beginning, where they're like seeing if they're home to co like hang them basically, and she's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> "You know, we're not here." Good catch. I didn't catch that. I, I did notice mm. the ditziness, but I forgot about the we're not here line specifically. Good catch. Uh, okay, so I took it a step further in saying they even brought back the zombie from the first movie as a kid, Billy Butcherson. <laughs> yeah, they had Billy in there. You get a look at him when he's not dead and got his mouth shown, sewn up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... The next part I have is with a lady that shows up. Okay. Um, so the Reverend is demanding that Winifred marries this trash boy. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Fuck you. And uh, he's like, all right, well, then we're going to take your sisters and basically indoctrinate them into the church, get them away from you and you're banished from town. So mm -hmm. chaos ensues and they end up running away to the forbidden woods. <laughs> okay so this lady just shows up and is like oh hey i'm a witch and here's their book that everyone remembers let's give it to you and have a fun saying with magic and bringing things together okay i am getting cynical on this movie already because i'm feeling like the nostalgia grab is coming on a little too strong already 
See, I went into this with, with the mindset of they will actually make a solid movie and we wouldn't have to worry about just being catered to the entire time. Well, 12 minutes in and so far I've been wrong. <laughs> Go on. Okay, that is a fair point. This this movie, so before like the first one, Disney, you know, Disney didn't have the rights to this, but it has definitely been Disney-fied and it is a lot more over the top than the original. Um. Yeah, regarding the scene, the the crow that was in the beginning is the witch. Like it, you know, shows her flying in the beginning and then she flies down and she's like, poof, a witch. She's trying to eat them. And then she's like, wait, you have some power. And she shows them book and, you know, they're looking at these spells and there is a forbidden spell in there that gives you like ultimate power. And she's like, you never you must never do that spell. It's forbidden, basically. So, yeah. yeah, they end up having a little bit of fun with the book after the witch leaves and they go back to the village and set the reverend's house on fire. <laughs> I like how we both just chuckle at that one. Oh, they set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's causing all kind of chaos. Uh, the next thing I have is present day Salem. Yep. Oh, OK, that's where we're at. All right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Uh. On to present day Salem, we are introduced to two girls who seem to have another third friend that they aren't quite friends with anymore. Uh, I kind of skimmed through a lot of the subtle details here and was kind of moving from scene to scene. So if you want to just kind of do your part, because I'm sure you're going to have way more details into this. Uh, sure. Um, so like Carnage said, it jumps to present day Salem and we're presented with the main character who is you know, her first scene is riding in on a bike, which alludes to the original character, Max, who also used a bike to get to and from school and, you know, around the town. Um, and she has the Didn't two friends. That. Yeah, Cassie and Izzy. And Cassie is the one that's estranged from the group because she's got this new, like, dumb jock, you know, stereotypical boyfriend. And there's a lot of tension there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just kind of, <laughs> I'm going to kind of just say what I have here. So I, I have that we are introduced to the two girls who seem to have another third friend. That's Cassie that you're talking about, that they aren't quite friends with anymore. The friend used to be, uh, the friend that used to be seems to have a boyfriend. The other two girls don't like, and then I said, there seems to be some sort of festival in the town happening during the night. And then we go off with the presentation with the local magic shop. Okay, I have a little bit in between this. Um, okay. Right after this, like, kind of tension where they meet the third friend, they're like, because mm, her boyfriend shows up and he's like, hey, come on. Like, basically pulling her away when she's trying to interact with them and, you know, kind of feel out what's going on. And uh, after that, they get into class and the main character brings a rock for, like, good luck. And so my brain is going... Maybe she's a witch. Like, that was my first thought. Because at the beginning, you know, it introduced how the Sanderson sisters became witches. So I was like, I bet that the main character is going to end up being a witch, too. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I have... There's... Where the hell am I? Oh, right, the festival thing. So there seems to be some sort of festival. And then the uh, owner of the magic shop puts on a cool... Wait, during the night and wait, what the hell? Where am I? <laughs> uh, OK, so there seems to be some sort of festival happening in, during the night. And when showing off a presentation with the local magic shop, we get more information <laughs> about the Sanders sisters. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, and then I said there's a bit of refreshing time where they start to go over what happened in the first movie. Uh, and the owner of the magic shop puts on a nice little show to kind of go over and explain to it a bit more. And then uh, the next thing I have is when he gives the main character her gift. OK, yeah, I pretty much have the same thing. He goes into this traumatic showing of telling the tale about the Sanderson sisters. And they basically like monetized the mythos like or mythos, however you say it, whatever. Mm. And he's selling like these black flame candles and. Um, all this, all this other like metaphysical stuff that you would find in like a normal like witchy shop, um, and uh, he he talks about them already coming back. Like some say that they had already come back, and it you know referring to the original movie. Yeah, uh, 
then after the show is kind of over with, he takes the main character to the side, has a bit of a rapport with her already, and knows that it's her birthday, so gives her some sort of candle that we kind of find out is the black flame candle from, you know, that's that's the big mystery thing, right? And then makes hints towards the main character possibly being a witch. This has happened a few times now. Could this be the new Sanderson sisters? There are three if you include the one with the boyfriend. Maybe. So once they leave the metaphysical shop, they go into the woods because the main character and her friends had a birthday ritual that they did. Little little witchy spooky thing, you know, like silly stuff kids do when they're young and they've just kept the tradition up. And, you know, the one friend is estranged from them. So it's just the two, uh, Izzy and Cassie, or Izzy and Becca. Becca is the main character. Becca, yep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, they start the they start the little ritual. They light the candle and she puts some rocks out. And the candle, they put it out, but then it goes black. And the ground starts shaking and, like, all this crazy shit happens. And then all of a sudden, we're presented with the Sanderson sisters with a... Classic Disney cringe song. <laughs> oh, dear God. Yeah. What, are you going to stop there? Do you think I have something to say about this? What would give you that Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely do. <laughs> okay. So, uh, like I would say, <clears throat> the main character uh, kind of gets hints towards being a witch. This has happened a few times now. Could they be the new Sanderson's? Sanderson systems, or three of them if you include the one with the boyfriend, well, they go into the woods. The same woods the Sanderson sisters go into. Then they start doing some sort of ritual thing with the candle and hear this all too familiar song that the Sanderson sisters heard many moons ago. And I might be onto something here. Oh no, it's just the actual Sanderson sisters. And oh dear God, why are they singing? Is there going to be a lot of this? Because I certainly hope not. <laughs> <laughs> It was, That's what I got it, so was it was, it was, I, I physically cringed when it happened, but for real, <laughs> but they looked great. Oh my God. Mary. Oh yeah. Looks oh yeah. So good Go now. Like, oh my gosh. And Bette Midler, that woman is 76 years old and she looks mm -hmm. so good in this movie. I, I will say they did Sarah Jessica Parker pretty dirty in this, uh, but. Okay. So it wasn't just me then, right? No. No, they did her dirty. I digress. I, I made one little comment to it, but I didn't want to come off as mean or anything. So all I like later on in the review, I do say that the three of them look incredible. Uh, and well, two of them do at least. And then I deleted it. I was like, no, no, no. All three of them look great, especially for, you know what I mean? Their ages and shit. Like, yeah, this is a 30 year old movie in the making. You know what I mean? Like for them being the age that they were back then and then now still being able to do it 30 years later, like it's pretty phenomenal. So I, I give yeah. them a lot of credit. But damn, Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker definitely, definitely yeah. was the least of the three with how good they, they, they still did, was. They did her dirty. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. All right, so the girls run away, but they end up mm -hmm. they end up getting caught, right? Like they and they're trying to uh Okay, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. They, you know, they come back, they do their song and they're like, "Oh, it's time to get revenge on Salem." And they're like, "Let's make the life stealing potion." And Winifred calls for book. The beacon doesn't light up, so they're like, "Where the fuck is book?" And then they find out the girls are there because they're like running and Mary pops in front of them. And it's like, oh, look, a snack. Um, <laughs> as she is wont to do. <laughs> and Becca kind of like improvises and she's like, yeah, we brought you back on purpose. You know, we're like worshippers of yours and they fall for it at first. And uh, so what the girls end up doing, like they're asking them, like, well, we need to brew this life stealing potion. And they're like, well, they already make that now. Those are like included in the lotions and the serums and stuff so they end up <laughs> taking them into town through the fair that's happening to a walgreens <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um yeah i i put the next line what the hell is with the product placement is there a need to display walgreens as big as they did <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's it uh that's all i put so far <laughs> i was just kind of put off by it, like walgreens isn't this a kids movie why is the, why is, whatever i just didn't think anything of it beyond that yet <laughs> is that okay i mean 
<laughs> the next thing I have is a bit more of an action scene. Uh, like, okay, so yeah, I figured there'd be a little bit more to the Walgreens scene with you. Okay. Kind of let you All take right, that so away. They, at first they they see them the girls walk through this the automatic doors and they're like whoa, she must be really powerful because the doors are just opening for her. So Winifred's like, I got this. I'm powerful as fuck, bro. She walks in and then the other two sisters are like, oh, oh, oh. But they make it through and the girls show them the potions and they start, they open up these like lotions and shit and they're like drinking them. I just drink it all. (laughs) Yeah. Mary finds like one of those face masks and she's like, look, it's the skin of a baby and she starts eating it. Yeah, and it's it's, there was it's definitely... much more silly than the original mm-hmm. movie. Like it's it's so like overdone, but it was still kind of endearing to me. There was it it, it had its moments. So I kind of looked at it as they were just kind of taking handfuls of jokes, throwing them at a wall, and hoping one or two of them sticked every time. And it did. You know, the one or two of them it's did fair. definitely stick every once in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So the next thing I have uh uh is a bit of trickery happens with modern things and they get mad at the kids and start to shoot bolts of lightning at them. And finally we get to see some of that Disney money come to fruition, (laughs) but shit, haven't we been here before? Didn't the last movie do exactly this. The kids let the candle sisters come back and they immediately get fooled by modernness enough for the kids to get away. Let me not shit on this movie too hard. There has been some funny, funny moments for sure. There's also something to be said about how good the sisters look still after all these years. The next thing I have is about the sisters more um, quest (laughs) description, I guess. Okay. All right. So while they're still in the Walgreens, these three girls come up and their dress is them. They're like, the other two girls are like, yeah, they're your worshipers too. And so they take a photo of them and they, the sisters get to look at the photo and they're like, oh, he looks so young because they had a filter on it. Mm -hmm. And so Becca's like, yeah, I told you it works. You know, it's already working. And they turn around and they see one of those like anti-theft, like round mirror things that they have in stores. And like, they're all like distorted and shit. And so they get pissed, of course. And uh, so immediately they know something's up and they start going after Becca and Izzy. But Izzy is in the back getting salt because Becca knows that salt is protective. And uh, they use that to stop the sisters from killing them and they they run out and they head to the magic shop clearly becca has seen (laughs) the first movie uh (laughs) so the sisters are trying to kill the mayor and they need some big boy spell that i'm not supposed to do because it's crazy dangerous during that magic store owner is kind of their oh yeah this is way ahead there's a lot of shit that's basically once the plot is like, I, I skipped a bunch, I guess. I must have just kind of, hmm, I don't know, okay. been so immersed into it, you know? Yeah, please do. All right, so the girls leave the Walgreens and the sisters are still there. And they're like, you know, Winifred's like, we must fly. And <clears> so she finds a broom that's like a Halloween display. And then she's like, you guys go find whatever the fuck you can, just like the first movie. And Sarah comes back with a Swiffer and Mary comes back with two Roombas. <laughs> And they take off into the, the night. The Roombas were funny as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, that was a cute addition. And uh, anyway, the girls are at the magic shop. And Gilbert, the guy who owns the shop, he's still there. And they notice that the book is awake. And he's like, oh, shit. And he reveals that he knew about the Sanderson sisters. He was a child trick-or-treating uh, during the, the time of the first movie. And he saw them. And he became obsessed with them, trying to bring them back. And uh, for some reason, he thinks that he can turn them good. He's like, you know, they're just misunderstood. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he basically tricked Becca into summoning them. Uh, you know, he lied to her. And he's like explaining that to her when the sisters show up. And they go into it and they're like, oh, we're home. And then they end up lamenting about the state of the house because it's so clean. <laughs> and all their shit's gone, basically. Yeah. Where are my rat tails? I had seven of them or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, her lucky rat tail. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, that's that's when they start to go on about their plans. Mm-hmm. Kill the mayor and bust out the big boy spell and all of that. Did you have any more on that? 
Well, it is it is important to note that the mayor of the town is their estranged friend's father, and he is a descendant right. of the reverend that they originally hated. See, this is why I ask. <laughs> I don't have the, quite the details you do. <clears throat> uh, so, okay, I, I see. When does the magic store owner end up like getting kind of brought in front of the sisters? No, uh, it's like that's... it's like immediately when they're when they show okay, up yeah. after the girls have been talking to him. Because that's kind of what I have here. Like the magic store owner kind of becomes their their errand runner and is sent to get the head of a lover. Enter Billy Butcherson. Seems like the magic store owner is going to side with him to get back at the Sanderson's Sanderson sisters. In okay, go ahead. Okay, so it's important to note the girls get thrown into the cellar, and Winifred <laughs> casts a spell so that they can't get out. They can't like, yeah. communicate anyway. Their phones aren't working, and uh, Gilbert runs off to go find all. There's a bunch of different ingredients they need: the head of a lever, a petrified spider, juice of some berry, and witch's butter, which is like a yes, all the Horcrux. Yeah, it's like a fungus. Yeah. <laughs> so uh Gilbert comes across Billy's grave. He's like digging it up. Billy pops out. He's like, the fuck are you doing, bro? Like I've been awake this whole time. And so Gilbert ends up having to lie to Billy to say that he's trying to destroy the Sanderson sisters to get his cooperation. I mean, in all fairness, we don't necessarily know that he's lying right away, which I kind of did want to point out here a little bit. I like that part of it, because a lot of the times with these kind of movies, especially with like kids movies and shit, the. uh, It's kind of like given away that he's trying to trick him and it's like he'll either have his fingers, you know, crossed behind his back or will have very shifty eyes or something. There was none of that. This dude looked like he was legit trying to convince Billy Butcherson. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying to help you now. I'm convinced. So, I mean, as a viewer, I kind of appreciated that because in the back of my head, I'm thinking there's no way he's going to fucking do that. But at the same time, I'm like, but there's no reason for me not to believe him. Mm, I felt differently because his demeanor during it, he was like, how am I going to convince this dude who hates their guts? Did I not catch that? Mm. And also, like, throughout the whole thing, we'll get there. I'll, I'll bring it up when we get to that point. Okay. Uh... So, yeah, I have the meanwhile, the kids are trapped in the dungeon of the witches and try to call the third friend, but a curse is not allowing for it. Uh, And then they finally remember they have some sort of cursed lifting herbs and get out. (laughs) And I said, I got to be honest, I am just not enjoying myself at all. (laughs) The plot just seems to be taken forever to me. It seems like it's just a bunch of nostalgia grabs in between what little plot points there are. The newer characters just feel super shoehorned. Why should I care about these three new girls? Are they actually witches? Is the new boyfriend something holding them back from getting their power? Please be the case. Something has to be new, right? Christ, are they? They are even using the same damn song to use the same damn spell to get someone they're looking for. There also seems to be a lot of unnecessary scenes. During the nostalgia song bit, they have a scene where Sarah Jessica Parker's character is literally just aimlessly flying around. Like, there's no reason whatsoever for it all. (laughs) It's just they just have her there floating around very oddly. That's it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> you all right that? Like, um, it was bizarre it was like at the end of the song kind of sort of she was just like very strangely flying around not dancing not singing nothing just like hey look at me <laughs> do this for a couple of minutes all right next scene what the fuck was that <laughs> i'm sorry no you're good <laughs> i get it i shat on your avenge sevenfold album it's, it's not even mm, th- mm, th- there's there's some redemptions okay well all right, the herb that they used was Angelica. Um, okay. Which they got for free. She got it for free for her birthday. And it has, like, curse-breaking properties. In the world of Wicca, it's m- mostly just a protection herb or a prosperity herb. It's not, you know, it can protect against, hex- protect against hexes, but it's not meant for, like, breaking curses. Not even accurate. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they end up breaking the curse and while they're doing, you know, just trying to figure out how to get out, Becca's hand starts to glow. So I'm like, okay, yeah, she's definitely a witch. Um, Mm. So they call the mayor who is at the fair, 
who's been trying to get his candied apple this whole time. And because the the boyfriend has decided, you know, let's throw a party. And the estranged mm-hmm. friend is like, yeah, sure, we'll do it at my house. And the girls in the beginning were trying to tell her, like, your dad's going to kill you if he finds out. So now that they know the Sanderson sisters are after her father, they they call her him and say hey your daughter's having a party at your house and so he leaves so that he's safe so they know he's safe now and uh the sisters are at the fair now and they're like delighting in all the like stupid shit that's going on for halloween and they do the concert thing and i will say it is a different song they use some of the same like little singing bits but it was a different song and the crowd starts to lead them to the mayor (laughs) And they're, like, flying. Whatever. And it, it turns into, like, this weird flash mob thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, so I have... <laughs> okay, song over. Hopefully something will happen that I haven't seen 30 years ago now. Okay, this is another pet peeve of mine with this movie. They seem to just constantly go back to the well of let's show the Sanderson sisters some other form of modern technology and watch them freak out. Jesus fucking Christ, did this much new technology come out? Did this much new technology come out in the last 30 years? Oh, look, another borrowed scene from the first movie. They trapped the sisters with salt because salt stops witches, guys. Remember that from the first movie? They're even calling themselves out on it at this point. (laughs) Uh, it seems like everyone in the movie has to remind us that, hey, look, they're doing something again. Oh, hey, you've been tricked by teenagers again. Oh, look, Billy Butcherson is losing his head again. Oh, look, they're doing a uh, doing everything they did in the fucking first movie again. <laughs> did you catch that? Like, it just you're, seemed you're like they wrong. kept fucking. Oh, my God. And then they would actually call themselves out on it. Hey, look, we're doing this again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. It. You're not wrong. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, they get trapped in the ring of salt, and the mayor arrives home, and he's like, who the fuck are you? Like, And he's like kind of entertaining them, and, you know, they're like, oh, that's him. And some shit happens. Like, the girls are kind of, like, making up. There's, like, a redemption arc between the three friends, and uh, they, they're just kind of chilling out there, and then Mary's Roombas show up and I'm like oh shit the Roombas are gonna set them free (laughs) so the Roombas come and they like suck up the salt and the sisters are free and they grab the estranged friend Cassie and take her off into the woods yeah so uh, at some point they mentioned Walgreens again (laughs) because I just have here why are they mentioning mentioning Walgreens so much too is there really product placement for Walgreens in a fucking kids movie who the fuck is this movie for (laughs) Okay, the one kid gets taken away and the other girl has been hinted at being a witch starts to shoot lights out of her hand. So we'll see what happens there. And yeah, we go to the woods. <laughs> okay. So the Sanderson sisters start doing their ritual because Gilbert has showed up with all the pieces that they needed. Um, and the girls show up to see the ritual happening and... Izzy notices that Becca's hand starts glowing and they're like, oh shit, you're a witch. And she uses her, she tries to use her power to stop them, basically. And also, yeah, so okay. I've been drinking, I really have to pee, so I'm gonna let you take it away for like two minutes, okay? Do your thing. I got you. <laughs> so, as mentioned before, the Walgreens thing, can we just talk about that while she gone? Like, holy fucking shit. This is a movie Okay, Cassie, you're 28, 29, whatever you said early. But for the most part, motherfuckers watching this are either going to be 30-something-year-olds or kids. But you didn't make the movie for the 30-something-year-olds because it's still a kid's movie. But there's nothing in here but nostalgia grabs for the 30-something-year-olds and advertisements for Walgreens. What kid is going to fucking Walgreens and just being like, yo, we got to go to the wall. We got to go to the wall. Let's hit the wall. Ain't nobody going to fucking Walgreens as a kid. Come on, man. What are they going to get there? Just a bunch of candy and shit. I mean, I guess that's kind of cool, but you can go to any gas station for that. What does Walgreens have that I don't know about? That's what I want to know. As a matter of fact, I even put that at one point. What the fuck do they know about Walgreens that I need to learn? Because damn. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, then apparently, yeah. Okay, I don't want to say that yet, but yeah. This fucking mom's not liking your comments on this movie. She loves it. Well, I mean, hey, listen. I'm not saying I don't love the movie. I'm not saying I hate the movie. I'm not saying I don't of either of those things. All I'm saying is there's been a couple of nostalgia grabs that have been kind of cheap that I didn't really appreciate. I also didn't like the part where they're just constantly advertising uh, Walgreens. That's just very strange and out of place for me. There's there's definitely its pivotal moments, but we haven't come across any yet, you know? It, it was, mm, there's, there's an overall coming up. There's an overall coming up, y'all. Y'all just wait for the overall. Oh, look, Runa's back, so we're good. Hi. Good. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Oh, my Mama God. Mama Dukes is mad at me for not liking this movie. You're good. <laughs> All right. So, so, okay, the last thing I said was uh, 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 the kid gets taken away. They go into the woods, and we'll just see what happens there. Okay, well, like I said, the, the girls show up, they realize she's a witch, she tries to fight off the sisters, like, stop the the ritual that they're doing, and there's a lot of, like, back and forth chasing going on, which I didn't really like. It's like, oh, let's run away. Oh, let's go back. Let's run away. Let's go back. And yeah. it's like, what? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> but... Uh, at, at one of these chase scenes, Becca calls out to Book and she's like, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to let them read the spell. And Book ends up choosing her. So she takes off with Book, uh, rallies up with her friends. And the book basically is like, hey, read this warning. And we get to see that it's, um, you know, you're going to give up what you love the most in the world. Mm -hmm. So then the girls are like, well, let's go help them. So then they go back to the ritual site. Because uh, Winifred is distraught the book chose someone else. Because book is like her baby. So she's like, I don't need you anyway. Like, fuck you. And uh, they arrive and are trying to, like, stop the spell. But it ends up going through. Okay, so... <laughs> I'll take over from here for a little bit. Okay, I guess it's big boy spell time. All the Horcrux were gathered, and it's time for that Potter boy to get his comeuppance. Okay, they just said the salt from the Walgreens gave the girl witch powers. Walgreens. What the fuck do they know about Walgreens that I need to learn? Either way, it's time for the showdown between Harry and Voldemort. Oh, and look at that. Hermione and Ron are there to help too. All silly jokes aside, they are... Uh, they all do get the spell accomplished, and now all three have powers, referring to the witches. Okay, so the girls fought off the witches with the power of friendship, I guess, and the sisters went to finish the big boy spell. Meanwhile, now equipped with the books, the kids are formulating a way to stop them. Okay. So they go back to the ritual, and Becca's like, hey, you didn't read the warning. Like, you're going to end up losing what you love the most. And when her friend, she, at first, she's like, eh, whatever, you don't know shit. You're just a little baby witch. No one cares what you have to say. But then her sisters start to disintegrate. And it's so sad. Like, it's honestly so sad. And Because uh, she does love her sister. She's very, mm -hmm. you know, self-absorbed, but she does love them. Like, she gave up a lot to protect them when she was young and you know she's the most powerful one out of them so she's always protected them even though they're kind of ditzy and uh you know she's doing this like panic thing she's like how do i get them back and it's like this redemption arc for her which i thought was kind of interesting um definitely peels away from the original where she's like mean and you know like this i'll get into it in my overall but Mm -hmm. she realizes her mistakes and she asks book like can you help me like please let me i want my sisters back you can take away the power i don't need it without like without my sisters it's pointless and book opens up and it shows the the three girls uh a uh what was it called a, a reunition or fuck I don't remember the name of the spell, but it was some sort of like reunited spell or something. Yeah, like that. a reuniting yeah. spell. And so the girls read it. And at first it seems like it doesn't work. But then Winnie starts to disintegrate and it's like it doesn't bring them back. It sends you to them. And Winifred's mm -hmm. actually really happy about that. Um, 
you know, she's happy to go because she's going to be with her sisters again. And then okay, as so she's things- fading away, the <clears throat> book ahead. sheds a single tear. I actually didn't catch the teardrop from the book. You didn't? Oh, No, sweet. That's, that's actually a nice touch. I kind of missed that. Um, one, this was uh, this was certainly a sad scene. But I will say this. I didn't like that scene up until the part where the girl kind of flipped it around and was like, no, this is going to bring you to them. As in to say, like, you're going to be happy and we're going to be happy because you're not going to be a problem anymore. So it wasn't just like, no, 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 the bad guys shed a tear. We have to be nice to them now and not get rid of them at all. It was still getting rid of the bad guy, but at the same time kind of showing their humanity and and allowing them to have that that redemption arc. So that part of it I did like, but at first here's what I had to say. <laughs> so they do get the spell accomplished and they're able to stay alive without even the candle being lit now. But now, but not before one last battle with the boy who lived or Becca or something. And just as that is about to happen, the two witches get snapped by Thanos. And all of a sudden, this is now a part of the MCU. And it may have just gotten interesting for me. Nope, much worse. The main sister was all, who was all powerful, but loses her sister, so decides to suddenly be good. So she tried killing all these people and were throwing her sisters to the wayside. No problem the entire time. But all of a sudden, they mean the world to her and she's trying... And she's willing to give up the one thing she's been trying to get for a million fucking years. Just like that. That part kind of had me a little bit bummed out because it's just like, man, I just wanted to see one last final battle. You set up this whole thing for this girl to be a witch. You set up this whole thing for this big magical fucking buff. And that's it. They just no, we lose these people. So now I'm going to be sad. And the power of friendship gives us all. Not saying it wasn't a cool way to wrap things up, especially when the fact, like I just said, they got rid of the bad guy and at the same time gave her the character arc. That was cool. That kind of redeemed it a little bit. But I was really kind of amped up for like a fucking cool final battle type thing, a little bit more of the special effects, a little bit more of Becca using her magic and shit. But it was just none of that. That was the big wrap up. No need for a final battle or anything. Just win with the power of friendship again. Where, <laughs> whatever, I guess they could have just turned the main witch to stone again. At least it was original and without Walgreens involved. <laughs> and then I put, oh, right. And the magic store owner is back. I keep forgetting he exists as the plot has been brought together and he's no longer needed for to be the convenient clue <laughs> for it when it is necessary anymore. Uh, and for some reason, Billy Butcher gets turned to dust because the spell to keep him alive is broken. But like, shouldn't the zombie just drop its corpse? These don't need to be magical to exist. Uh, is the other girl not pissed about being snitched on either? Like, <laughs> and oh my God, they mentioned Walgreens one last time before the credit. <laughs> I didn't pick up on all the Walgreens. So. The very last fucking sentence had Walgreens in it again. And I'm just like, no. And we oh, didn't no. watch. And I, I found this out uh, today. Um, there was a there was a stinger. There was an after credit scene. Oh, the didn't credits. Catch that I actually. thought about it. Mostly. I did, too. But I was so put off by the song that I was just like, for the love of God, let me turn this off. Uh <laughs> But no, Blaze is kind of right. There is going to be a Hocus Pocus 3 movie. And that kind of sells me a bit more on this movie to kind of like let their original Sanderson's, Sanderson sisters have their moment and let the new ones come to fruition and, and have their shining time. If anything, okay. they kind of Star Wars this motherfucker. Yeah, it was more of the same, but it was more of the same to introduce these three new characters that could potentially get a whole new generation of Hocus Pocus fans. And that is the reason I kind of appreciate it a little bit towards the end there. Okay. No, that's fair. I I pretty much agree with everything that you said. It is a lot of this nostalgia goggle shit. Um, I still liked it because I'm a fucking nerd and a simp for that original movie. Um, it was a little... I don't know. I guess I'll get into my overall here since I'm already on the track. Yeah, um, yeah. Blaze put it perfectly last night when we were watching it. It is a little campy. It's very Disney-fied. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of catering to a new generation, which I think is warranted, though, because this... Okay, as someone who practices Wicca and is into, like, folk magic shit, I think that the representation 
needed to change. It's needed to change for a long time because back in the 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, you've always had this, you know, gnarled witch, like they're ugly and they're evil. And then we bring in this new kind of witch who's good and, you know, they they use their powers. Yes, they use their powers Mm -hmm. for different things other than just power. So I appreciated that aspect of the movie a lot. Um. Yeah, I, I didn't actually write it overall because I just kind of wanted to wing this. But yeah, I I didn't love it like I do the original one, but I think that it was a good follow up. Like you said, it kind of paves the way for a new direction. Sure. <clears throat> okay, my overall. I feel kind of meh on the overall review. I certainly didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. I like some of the humor in it. Uh, I just wish they fleshed it out a bit more. A perfect example is the robot vacuums that the one witch has it's it's them being afraid of modern stuff again which works great and gets the laughs at it once just it gets old quickly when it's a new technology over and over and over again the robots were funny throughout the whole entire movie uh though because they were showed uh they showed them to be more fleshed out and confusing the witches on several different levels rather than just the initial introduction only uh show me more of them interacting with the automatic doors at walgreens or something that would have been great and while we're on the topic why in the world is Walgreens mentioned as much as it was? I know I harped about this during the initial review, but really, what the hell is that about? If this movie is for kids, are they trying to make Walgreens the cool place to go? Whatever. I mentioned it enough before, so you know my thoughts there. The kids, in my opinion, carried this movie a bit, which was kind of surprising. One of the main complaints I would say that I have is how do they all learn these witch abilities so easily? I mean, they weren't all powerful witches or anything at the end. But then the Sanderson sisters take a while of uh, being mischievous with their powers before really letting loose. It just seems kind of odd. <clears throat> they were able to hold off blast from someone that just obtained this buff that was considered too dangerous for anyone to handle prior with a random shield bell that they just kind of pulled out of their asses last minute. And I know it's a kid's movie and I'm supposed to allow for a little suspension of disbelief, but like start introducing her powers earlier then. Stop beating around the bush with an all movie and just show her turn the boyfriend into a cat or some shit. Just don't give us a quick flashlight spell to announce they have it five minutes before the final battle and have her go against a new level of power unseen this far and hold her own. But like I said, the movie wasn't horrible. The thing that stopped me more than anything on giving this a bad review was the physical acting. It is damn hard to deny that the Sanderson sisters' Sanderson sisters' actresses are anything but brilliant in their physical comedy for this movie, especially Kathy. Najimi, I think that's how you pronounce it. That's the Najimi. one that played Mary Najimi. Oh, I had to look up the name to give proper credit because damn, is it due between the sniffing around the wild walk she would do differently depending on the context and the downright curly from the Three Stooges level of br- barking and reaction to things not like we're all downright flawless. Combined with her ability to still strike fear when surprising someone around the corner, as you mentioned earlier, and you have a perfect actress for this character. Uh, well done there, even 30 years later. Not to dimish- diminish the others, but her performance is what allowed me to say, this movie deserves a 2.5 or even 3 out of 5. That's what it deserves, at least. But due to the amount of savings I'm pumped for with all the Walgreens ads, I'm going to cut that by a percentage and give it a 2. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. That's fair. No, I think I think me and you are mostly on the same page with this movie. It's you can definitely tell it's geared more towards kids. Um but I think if you if you think about like fan service cuz the people who are watching this movie, like you said in the beginning, are 30-year-olds mm-hmm. or people who grew up watching this movie and are now trying to share that that love and you know, in that tradition Which is cool. with their children. Yeah. yeah. So that's why for me, it's a little higher up there because I, I am really nostalgic about the original movie. So I would say it's like a 3.5. It definitely wasn't I, a five star for me, but I think it, it did justice to the original. I would honestly say it, it's more deserving of a 2.5. I said, or even three, just because I was really blown away with that actress. And like, she did phenomenal. I mean, she did phenomenal 30 years ago and she's still playing the same character just flawlessly. So, I mean, I, I had to like <laughs> at least credit that and say a 2.5 or even three. And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, no, I should just be a 2.5, but I'm going to make a funny joke about the all greens and give it a two. <laughs> well, Jackson says of- 8.5 out of 10. 
Oh, well, speaking nice. of Mary, I, I watched one of the interviews with with all three of the actresses. And for Mary, whenever they did the original movie, um, the, you know, the crew asked her if she wanted to keep her costume. And she was like, no, nah, not really. You know, it's fine. And her husband went behind her back and actually bought it off of an auction to save it for her. So he was like, one day you're going to wish that you had this. And she said that she put it back on when they were deciding whether or not to do the, the movie, like the sequel. And she just felt like she was at home in the character, like instantaneously with the costume. So I thought that was, that Holy was really fuck. sweet. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's a cool little, uh, it's a cool little story about this. Yeah. So, I mean, to say that, like, like you were saying, it's not a great movie by any sense of the imagination. But you know what? It's it's certainly better than what it could have been. It could have easily just been a straight nostalgia grab, a straight cash grab. They didn't have to flesh out the story further by adding a potential for a, a whole new series with this and reviving the series itself. They didn't have to do all that. They could have just put all the fucking Billy Butcherson, Butcherson shit in there. The little clips from Hocus Pocus one that people were watching while they were going through the houses and shit. We didn't really mention that. That shit could have all been left in there. There could have been no new characters and just throw away characters that just brought the Sanderson sisters, sisters back and let them do their thing that way and just went straight for the nostalgia ended it with them dying and called it quits. But, you know, the fact that they kind of continued this a little bit certainly gave it a little bit more for me. And and I think that's the reason why um, I ended up liking it a little bit more than I thought I would that. And like I said, the physical comedy was just perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Well, yeah. that's our review, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed the return of Taste Buds. For real. Oh my god. I want to just point out that I had a fucking blast doing this. Uh I, I certainly don't think it was enough, but it's certainly enough to satiate my uh you know desire to do more. Like I I fucking love doing these reviews with you, homie. We always have such, you know, contrasting opinions, but at the same time, like even when we come together on opinions, like we we kind of help each other like oh you know i liked it for this reason that's a good point i hadn't thought about that but this reason's you know and and i just i love the fact that we can stay open-minded even in a review and uh yeah i don't know it's it's always a blast reviewing shit with you dude yeah for real we'll have to talk about maybe bringing it back maybe not as frequent but i definitely enjoyed it a lot and i would like to get back into it for sure so yeah stay oh, yeah. tuned for an announcement about that if you guys if you guys want it, I mean, we brought it back. Do you still want it? Are you I, sure? If they want it, sure? if they want it, don't give them the encore unless it's asked for, right? <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of announcements, though, uh, there happens to be a special guest that wants to join for an announcement. Oh, well, you want to hop on here. over to the streaming channel? Sure. Sure. Hello, hello. Hello, guys. Hello. Nice. Hey, not, not, <laughs> what's going on, guys? Uh, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful show. Thank you guys so much for doing that, man. I love Taste Buds. Oh, yeah, um, brother. I wanted to uh, say a couple of things before we hop into the ghost event. Some little talking points, some little little things to help everyone na navigate the stream. So if you don't mind, I would like to say all that right quick. No, Go I'm ahead. absolutely against it. Fuck you. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Barry, just kidding. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point out that this is amateur footage. Um, we are no way in professionals. Uh, I'm not. I'm not speaking bad on anything or anyone. Like I even have footage that's really, really shaky. Um, with the cooldowns, uh, or with the commands, sorry, the commands uh, will have a two-minute cooldown on each each one of them. So be aware of that. So don't go crazy with. Um, you know spamming the uh, the commands because they do have a cooldown um there will be on-screen prompts letting you know when the commands do become active and when a ghost event uh happens on the footage on whose Ooh. pov that it's happening on so we will let you guys know Ooh. um let's see yeah, the, the, all that all, all that is taken care of. And one final reminder: this is a four-hour long event, so please take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Eat if you have to go. Please go, and if you're tired, uh, this is going to be on YouTube afterwards as well, right, Blizzy? 
and I was thinking about doing a rebroadcast for our um, uh, people over overseas at around like one o'clock when it's like nine o'clock over on the other side on the other side of the ocean. So, wow, that's a great idea. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So that's all I wanted to uh, say. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. And if you guys have anything else to say, go ahead and say it. All right. Thanks, yeah, brother. We'll wrap it up here. Um, awesome. Yeah, you guys, Ghost Hunt's coming up. We're s- super stoked about it. Main event. Holy the, shit, I'm so excited. The Halloween <laughs> year. Uh, fuck, I'm going to be in Discord watching it if anyone wants to hang out. Oof. I'm going to chill in there. Um, good point, so good yeah. point. Yeah, if you guys want to so, chill in there and... I was going to say a couple of us were going to be chilling in there from what I understand. So yeah, I mean, come hang out. And and I also want to say that includes the the newer DMG homies. Some of the people that haven't really been around DMG too much, or maybe this is your first exposure to DMG during a Halloween event. Come hang out with us. The discord's a good time. Uh, I always say that we'll, we'll, we'll catch you with our streams, but we'll keep you with our voice chats, man. It's a good time. And it's just, yeah. I, I can't really sell it enough. You're just going to have to go in there and find out for yourself otherwise. For real, for real. Yep. All right, y'all. Okay. Thank you guys Also, so keep much. in mind that there will be a... Oh, sorry, sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, keep in mind that there will be a brief pause in the stream uh, while we get everything set up on our end. So please stick around. We will be right back. Yep. Yeah, about 15, 20 minutes, you say, Bliss? No, 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 no. Like, maybe a minute. Yeah. Oh, just that brief of a pause. All right, yeah. go for it. We're going to roll it right after we wrap this up. But yeah, thank you guys so much. All the streamers, the viewers, everyone that participated in this. We do this shit for you guys because we love you and we love seeing everyone together, getting together and having fun. Uh, And stay tuned for some Christmas announcements. We're going to be doing some shit for that, too. But yeah. Anything else you want to say, Carnage? Uh, no, I mean, I just, oh, you know what? There is. There's one thing. I would like to fucking thank each and every fucking person that not only made the streams happen this week the people that showed up the people that put on a hell of a show uh all of them every single one of them from from fresco to straw hat to omg it's gb to lh's game show to lair to shy's participation in dmca to alexa coming all the way overseas just to be a part of a dmca episode i'm convinced that's the reason uh the point is bringing back taste buds bringing back business all of this cool ass shit like it was amazing this whole fucking week was (laughs) amazing But more important than all of the content creators, I can only go as far as saying that we can't do it without the content consumers alike as well. And that's why it's in the fucking sales pitch. Content creators and consumers alike. Because without y'all, we can't have these events. Sure, we can have all the great content creators that we could ever fucking ask for. But if no one's going to watch them, then who the fuck gives a damn? But the content consumers, y'all show the fuck up. Y'all show us that, hey, keep making this shit. We're going to keep showing up. And we appreciate the fuck out of you. And that is why we do it. The fucking passion that you guys show for us, we like to reciprocate right back to you on the screen. So keep showing up and we'll keep making these dope ass fucking projects. Yes, sir. Let's get it started. Thank you so much. Without further ado, we'll see you guys in the ghost hunt or the discord chat. Bye. Sit tight.